I don't know about you. I've never had a sense people always will ask, have asked me a lot, like, when did you feel like you'd made it? Or um, when you've arrived. Um, did, did you ever have that moment where you thought, because I, I feel like I'm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree because I, I, I don't, I, I don't, it, def, it depends what your definition of making it is. Is yeah. it having a million bucks in the bank or being in a movie that's number one yeah. or getting a multi-picture deal with some studio? Mm -hmm. Is that making it? Or is it doing that project? I mean, we did Squid and the Whale together. Mm -hmm. And is making it the reaction you get from someone who walks up to you last week? Who said, I just saw Squid and the Whale. My family was divorced. My, yeah. Oh, that movie. Yeah. Is that making it? No. I think yeah. it's making it. Now, when you were little, did you, did you know you wanted to be an actor? No. Did you, I, you didn't? It I wasn't even in your... No, and I and I don't I don't. Uh, it's just something I was good at. Right. I never. Did you have the thing? Oh my God! I want to be on lights. No, you know, I didn't have broader. that. But I knew that I wanted to be an actor. Really? But I, I I kept it a real secret. I was too embarrassed to say it, because there were so many. You know, I would encounter kids who'd be like, "I'm going to be an actor." Cha -cha! And I would want to fall into the earth when I would see them behave that way. <laughs> I don't know why it made me embarrassed. So I kept it a secret for a very long time. Until? Until I was doing summer stock in New Hampshire. And I remember it was, I was still in high school at that point. And I'd still, I'd been doing lots and lots of theater, but I was sort of, I was closeted. I didn't come out. I remember I was sitting in a car with my mother in a parking lot. And I said, you know, I want to apply these, to these colleges because I want to be an actress. And it was the first time it had ever come out of my mouth. And I was proud of myself for being able to say it, but was still embarrassed. And I have moments, I think, where I'm still embarrassed to say it, <laughs> that I want to be an actress. Because people um, don't understand. No, no. It's not really work, is it? Just being famous, right? Yeah. What, what I love is the, um, the misconception of, well, you're an actress, just, just lie. Oh. And, and, and acting is not lying. No, it's the opposite. I feel it's the exact opposite of lying. So I have people when I'm at press events or at a photo shoot, which is not my most comfortable environment. And I people, love photo shoots. Do you love I them? Live for I know them. you do. Yeah, yeah. I dress for them. <laughs> there you go. But they will say to me, you know, just act it. You're in a, and, and I'm like, but, but there's fraudulence there. So there's yes. the question about what's, falseness, yeah. what's fraudulent, what's acting, what's truthful, what's pretend, and all of those questions, all the, the braiding of all of that stuff, I find, uh, I'm constantly thinking about it. Is making it, making a living? Right. In this right. completely crazy, by the yes. way, you're not here next week, you'll be over. That's right. In that right. business, I think making a living in it is making it. Well, there's, yes, there's that. There's the nuts and bolts of the life. That's where I live. That's, that's, I mean, I, I look at, there's a longevity club. Mm -hmm. The actors who, who decade, who are still in it, like us. I see people, and I, first thing I said to you today, I said, <laughs> I know. we're, we're still, still here. Business. We're still in the business. <laughs> I know. Because so know. many of our friends who are equally yes. talented, yes. maybe more so, yes. are out. Yes. Yes. They're out. Or yes. they didn't yes. have the drive, or they didn't have that relentless, I'm not giving up, yeah. which is, there I is sit a, with college kids and I go, yeah. you have no idea what it is you're going to need inside of you yeah. to withstand the yes. rejection that I still feel yes. in my 60s. Of course. Even when it's going well. Yes. There's that, and we like someone else. Yeah. You know yeah. that. It, there, is a, there is that, that aspect of grit. Yes. Of just grit. And allowing yourself to feel bad when things don't go well, when you're embarrassed or you're rejected or humiliated. Fail. When you fail. You fail. I'm a big, I'm a big advocate for failure, though. Um, but it, there is that, that sense of putting it all in, in some sort of perspective, having some code for yourself yeah. so that you can keep evolving. So that it doesn't, you don't become too knowing. 
I always, I can always smell out actors and a lot of young actors are, fall into this pitfall a lot is, is just becoming too knowing. They know. I know what to do. And I think you're, 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 you can go nowhere if you feel like you know what's happening. I think we're in a profession. And <clears throat> in my 60s, I'm looking around going, look at all the stuff you've learned. Yeah. From the yeah. people, from the people you got yes, to work with. Yes, the amazing people. And it's, yeah. you're not an athlete. Your yeah. body hasn't broken down. It yeah. still can yeah. function yeah. in a profession where we now get to use four decades of yes. everything we've ever yeah. learned. It's like you yeah. feel like, okay, now I'm ready. Now yeah. I have a pretty good idea of how to do this. Yeah. So now, instead yeah. of doing a brand, yeah. instead of Laura Linney, the action star, <laughs> You know, and that's who you are. I mean, I, my side is full of those guys. Now it's, let me, and that's what's so great about Ozarks, about Looming Tower, about all those shows, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, is the writing is gone there. Yeah, and yeah. people like us yeah. get to risk failure. Yes. We get to try things. We get to take all that stuff we've learned and test it. And that's, those are the actors I watch. Those are the ones that I pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Not the ones who are going, you know, let me do that thing I did over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, and also, the, I mean, we're both lucky because we, we're not in one medium. I mean, we, tend, we move from, I mean, I'm, I did a play last year, I'm doing a play. When Ozark finishes in the next week, you're off to do a play. You've done two series the past year. So there is something about the circulation of uh, different environments and different requirements for the job. So this is one question that I have for you. Since you've just done these two big series, you did Godless and Looming Tower. And here's, here's a question. Because we were both trained in mediums that had, uh, in, in film and on the, in theater, where there's a beginning, middle, and end to a story, where you have all of the information so that you can do very, very detailed work because you know exactly it's finite and it's there. How do you handle the sort of unrolling of a character over a long period of time? How do you, what decisions do you make? Do you make decisions? Do you just sort of roll with it? Do you, because that's something that I, I struggle with. I struggle with not knowing what's happening in four episodes. I feel like I can't plant the things that I would be able to plant, say, in a two-hour movie in the first act that would then pay off at the end of the movie. So how do you... Do you deal with that? Do you think about that? You never will know what's going to come for episodes yeah. now because they don't know. So I know. you so got to give up. So what, you just, I you give, just up. give it up? Newsroom was like that. Aaron Sorkin would write uh, an episode at a time. Certainly the writers right. knew, the producers knew what was kind of where it was headed. But it was, it was pretty outlined, and that could change. Right. So you play the—I I played the moment, played the episode. Yeah. This is all that's going on. This, yeah. is, this is all I know. So and that's, then do you take what you learn from the character in those moments of being very present, which probably the writers will not see or not know, and then do you infuse that into the next chapter of what's coming? Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, always, I looked at Newsroom as the first season was a getting to know the characters, getting to, from my end, from Aaron's side. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of exploration. It's... It's a f season one, and there it is, but it's, it's a first draft on the big picture if you're going to go five seasons or six or seven. So I, I, I give them that. I, yeah. I have the benefit of the doubt. I, you're not going to know everything. Yeah. And, no. and, and, and I've, I make the choice, right or wrong, I've never executive produced. I've never been interested in attending any meeting other than <laughs> the one where I got to memorize the lines. I mm -hmm. come in. Yeah. I do it the best of my ability. I will give myself options trying to guess what might be coming, but basically it's here are five ways to do it, fast, slow, you know, all that stuff, mm -hmm. so that they have, so they can write that final draft of the episode in the editing room, which is what happens. But as far as down the road, yeah. uh, I'm gonna pretend that I don't know what happens next month in my own life. And so I try to look at it like that. Godless, we had all seven scripts. Yeah, yeah. So there's the beginning, yeah. middle, and end. You, yeah. Okay, now as a writer, yeah. actor, but also as a writer, you get to set yourself yeah. up and yeah. all that stuff that yeah. ideally there's something I'm looking at to do, you know, in a year mm -hmm. or so. And 
you give the writers enough time to yeah. write all ten scripts. I kind of love the miniseries. I love being the limited the, the series miniseries thing. is great because exactly because of that because you have all the information. Family's everything, son. My family were lost. You trust me, son? Cause I ain't your brother. I will never leave you, not ever. You had done The Big C on, mm -hmm. was it Showtime, I think? Yes, yes. And uh, so you're experienced in doing the series thing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're also doing movies, you're doing plays. Mm -hmm. But you went back, you went back to series TV, which I some did. people go, oh God, no, oh yeah. God, yeah. it's too much, it's too fast, yeah. it's all that. Yeah. And you went back yeah. to Ozarks. I did. Why? That's a really good question. It was a small voice that told me to do it. Honestly, it was instinct. And it was Jason Bateman, who I had known socially just a few times, but I always really liked him. I always sort of thought, what's going on with that actor? There's I was like, that, that actor him. has more to do. Yep. Like, this actor has always been in one lane and has done it really, really well, but there's more going on there. It's sort of like an antenna. You sort of get an instinct about other people, other actors. You're like, what's happening with that person? So the fact that he wanted to explore um, a different genre was interesting to me. And I just thought, that's going to be good. He's going to be really good. And I thought, I don't have to produce, so I'll just show up and act. And will this work for my family? And uh, okay. I had no plans to go back to television at that point. I really didn't. Um, but it's, it's worked out and it's been wonderful. How are the, I, I how's love the writing it. on it? The writing's really good. The writing's really good. And they've been wonderfully um, inclusive and genuinely collaborative. You know, there's that great expression, she collaborated me and I collaborated him. <laughs> I haven't people, heard that. Yeah, they collaborate. When you collaborate each other, mm. really in the little name of. Yeah, <laughs> friendship, yeah, pointy elbows. But this group of people are really wonderful, and 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 I sort of sniffed out some things about this character early on that I thought I think knowing that when things roll out like this, I don't have anything to grab onto, or I feel like I don't have anything to grab onto. Yeah. I needed a few foundation stones from which to work. So I made those core decisions about the character for myself which most of the time I won't share with anybody. Right. But I thought if this is gonna have the opportunity to run for a while, these writers need to know that this is at least what I'm thinking about and does that interest you? Does that interest the writer's room? Is this something that you all could maybe incorporate in for me? And God bless them, Chris Mundy, who's our showrunner, and that wonderful group of writers have done that. So I check in with them occasionally and say, this is what I'm getting a sense you all are doing, is that, is that right? Or how would you all feel if I sort of brought this color in or, and so it's, it's, it's so creatively, it's wonderful. So you go into the writer's room and you sit down and you. Well, they're here, they're in Los Angeles and uh, we're in Atlanta, uh, but I did go in at the beginning of the season just to sort of say, this is what I learned about her last season. This is what I loved about her last season. This is what I'm thinking I wanna keep exploring in some way and does that work with what you all are thinking? Um, so I try to take what they have and then from that, let ideas then come as well. So that it's not the final stage. So that it's, it's, um, it's then a, uh, like a source of, of, of inspiration, hopefully, to, to move it even further. Mr. Diker will be living in the basement for a year, give or take. Mom, what are we doing here? Your father's laundering money for a Mexican drug cartel. I want to know what about the, the the characters that you that you play in Looming Tower and Godless. Was there what? Because there's always stuff that worries us when we take something on. Most of the time, were stuff there like what? You know, is this character believable? Can I pull this off? Oh yeah. Is this character just going to be a dud? Do I? Is this really going to move action forward? Is this a character I want to play for a long time? You know, is, how do I not make this a stereotype? All of those things. So wow. w were there any of those things float through? No. <laughs> no. None of that. Oh, God. 
Can I be you? I'm going. Can I be you? I don't please? know what's going on. I just don't care anymore. Yeah. I yeah. just don't care. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Godless. I don't know. I've never done that. I've yeah. never done yeah. a Western. Yeah. I've never Fun. done a cerebral bad guy with, with Scott Frank, who I've done a movie with, who I know can write, the writer, director. He said, we'll do this together. I want to make him cerebral. We don't know what we're doing. See you in Santa Fe right. in September. Great. Right. I'm in. Great. Failure. Yeah. Written yeah. all over. Unfortunately, <laughs> Mr. Daniels hides behind a big beard and does not supply anything needed for the story. Well, that's probably what it might have, could have been. Don't know. But I'm going in, I just eliminate all of that. Yeah. I find that if I'm reading a script and I start working on it before I finished it, if, it, if, it, if a script like trips my actor brain yeah. and I can't help myself, but I start thinking and start Hearing. Hearing things and ideas, and then I'm like, oh, I have to pay attention to this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Does that happen to you? Uh, no? uh, not, uh, uh, yes, but first comes, I don't know how to do this. That was John O'Neill yeah. in Looming Tower. It's, he's street, yeah. street smart. There's a Jersey thing, but it's a Midwestern accent, researched it. Yeah. And you're going, okay, so it's not, you know. And that whole culture, that whole that FBI whole culture, culture. Never yeah. been in that. Let's see if I can get in there and make that believable too. Yeah. So that that can go next to Dumb and Dumber right. and Squid and the Whale yeah. and everything yeah. else. Because I'm all about mixing it up. Right. It's the only thing keeping me interested. Now, I don't need this business. I just don't. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I always admired about you, and I think many people admire about you, is that you, you, you have your full, full life in Michigan. Yeah. And I can remember when, before I even met you, there was some article on you, I think it was in Rolling Stone, and you, there was a beautiful photograph of you on a dock by, on a lake, yeah. playing your guitar. Yeah. And I was like, oh, look at that. He, he's doing in film and television what the great regional theater actors get to do. Yeah. That's, yeah. And he's broken the mold there. I'm living where and I want to live, which yeah. at the time, that was the mid 80s. That was unheard of. It really was. I mean, it there were a unheard of. few that I, Sissy Spacek, I think, was in Virginia yeah. with Jack and, and maybe Harrison Ford and Redford had Sundance and maybe Robin was in San Francisco, Tommy Lee Jones in Texas. That's about all yeah. because the business really, it wasn't even Canada no. yet. It wasn't Toronto and all of that. It was L.A. for film and theater in New, New York. York. And, and that that's why it. all the theater actors went to L.A. Eventually, we all went to L.A. And I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I didn't do it either. I said, I, I'll, I'll, I guess I had a short career and that's, that's what it'll have to be because I'm not going to do it. And... You drop back and you become the supporting actor for 20 years, which is a great learning ground. a great life. And learning ground. Yeah. When you're in a yeah. scene yeah. with Meryl Streep in Heartburn, in a two-shot, mm -hmm. with Mike Nichols directing, mm -hmm. oh, and it's you on. and Meryl. Come on. Yeah, but, and it's a two-shot, and it's not working. Meryl isn't happy. Meryl is, it's just, Mike, I, what is it? I don't know. It's just, go do it again. And you're over there supporting actor number six, right. sweat coming down. You've got to be great eight times in a row because in the two shot, we're going to use the one where Meryl's great. Right. That's the first thing you learn. And then finally on take, whatever it was, eight or something, Meryl goes, Mike, I know what it is. I keep saying I'm going to leave and I get up. I'm not going to leave. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to say I'm going to leave and I'm going to sit here. Play the opposite. Great. Roll it. Boom. And she turns into Meryl Streep. Mm -hmm. Curb balls, knuck them, thing, yeah. everything. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, this is completely yeah. new, completely different. Cut. Mike Nichols says, great, terrific. Walks Merrill out, goes, great, Jeff. And walk, keeps yeah. walking her. Yeah. That's where you learn, be good right away. And that was really helpful in television, which, it, you know, come on, be ready on one. Yeah, be ready, be ready on one. On one. Yeah. Here's You're going to have to do some work to get there, but get, be yeah. ready on one because we how, will be. How far in advance do you learn your lines for TV? As fast as, as soon as possible. Yeah, me too. Um, newsroom, we had a lot of dialogue. I made sure that I was cold off book for the entire week by Sunday night previous. Yeah. I could walk around and rattle it 
and even run it line by line slowly back. I mean, all those drills, those repetition drills. Yeah. So that when you get on the floor, I don't yeah. care if it's Thursday comment, it's you've it's got to feel like it's the hundredth performance of a play. Yes. Well, that's the challenge, isn't it? That's the challenge. That is, is to, to find, to try and get the intimacy that you have and the relaxation that you can have on stage after six months of doing a show immediately. With no rehearsal. In, with no rehearsal, in clothes you've never been in, looking at someone you've never known. <laughs> you know, it is, that's the big, that's the sort of exciting challenge of yeah. Of, of film and television And I could for me. fool it's, myself if I knew the lines well enough so that I didn't even think about worrying, line, line, I yeah, no, worrying, yeah, then yeah. I could trick myself into thinking it was the 100th show. They're here. They're here in America. They're in London, in Afghanistan, they're in Kenya, Tanzania. And we... We have no idea what we're up against. Have you ever had any challenging moments in your career, Jeff Daniels? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I'm yeah. Challenging moments in my career. Um, dumb and Dumber. Thank you. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Um, I got it. And the first week of shooting, Jim Carrey never worked. He did one little scooter ride on Monday. Right. And then it was all me Monday later, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're shooting all my stuff. Jim's there. He's in Colorado. He's just not working. Oh, the audition is still going on. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> no one's oh, talking to me. Jesus. No one's telling oh. me. So we're all oh, going to look no. at the dailies on, on the weekend oh here in Colorado and also back at the studio where they've got a comedian on hold oh, God. to replace me, oh, which God. is what the studio wanted. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sweet I go Jesus. through the weekend going, oh, my God. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. No one's told me, but yeah. Sunday night, call time for Monday. Huh, still here. Go in Monday morning, Jim oh. walks in, who was always a champion of me. Nice. Jim walks in, taps me on the shoulder and says, just keep doing what you're doing, they love you. Kept walking. Yeah, yeah. That's the only one who, who, you know, because everybody wanted me except the studio. And so that was the big audition. Oh, no. Oh. Then there are those moments where you have to, you, you've been on a movie for three or four months and the last week of the movie is all the big stunts. The intense stunt work yeah. is the last week when you're exhausted yeah. and you realize, oh, they're doing this in case we die. Yes. They still have a movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, that's what that is. And godless, that's... I broke my wrist. Oh, no. Second to last day of shooting. Yeah. Three months of riding horses. Right. Three months. You ride horses? Right. I have, yes. You know. Yeah. It's an 800 pound infant. Yeah. It's, it, and, and, yeah. Third time I got flo thrown, and I trained so that I could, you know, I could yeah, do the yeah, thing. Yeah. But I still flew off it three times, and the sure. third time I broke my wrist with a day left in shooting. And you go, good producing. Yeah, yeah. But it's wild when you realize it. And I can remember the first few jobs I had, I arrived, and it would be the most difficult scenes right up. Huge, emotional, crying, difficult scenes. And I was like, oh, they want to make sure I can do it. Mm. They want to see if I can do that big scene. And if they can't, they can replace me without, yes. you know. Uh, so, and then you just sort of have to do your work. Then you, you have to somehow quiet all the other voices and plug into what you love to do and, and do your work. What about directors? How much, yeah. how much time does a director, this probably depends on the director, how much time does a director have with you? I'm a director, it's take two, we're gonna get ready to take, do take three, I'm coming up to say something to you. How much time do I have? Oh, you can talk to me as long as, as, you, really? as, long as you want. Yeah, yeah. Really? As long as, it's in from, as long as it's in a language that I, is helpful and I can understand. Two minutes. Two minutes, 
And I think yeah. that, and remember on that one? Oh, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Because I think you're really yeah, yeah, yeah. going to, yeah. oh, I've lost you already. Yeah, a lot of times I I've lost you already. <laughs> yeah. My thing on Newsroom, yeah. Yeah. five words or less. Oh, that's good. Because a we haiku. Get, you haiku. want a haiku. You could do it in a haiku. It's a haiku. Don't come to me. Stay that's in the chair right. if you're not bringing a haiku. Right, yeah. No, but that helped the different director right, each right. episode thing. It's just... Well, I think there's also something about when, you, when you're from the theater, there's something about learning on your feet. W you can't learn unless you do it. You can't do right. it unless you know your words. Like, so you learn on your feet. So I like to, instead of talking about it so much, let's just get up and try it. It might be terrible, but let's try it. Let's see what's there. So there's... Give There's me a word. That. Give me three words or something right, that yeah. I can tape to the inside yeah. of my forehead. That's right. And 16 things will happen yeah. because now I'm being more polite yeah. this time. When I, when I was doing a play with John Shanley, when I first got out of school, it was a character I didn't understand. It was the sister of the main character who just twirled around in a, in a wedding dress the whole time. I was a little confused. And I went to John. I was like, John, I don't quite understand. He was like, Laura, snowflake. Snowflake, snowflake. And I got it. I was like, got it. I got it. Really? I got it. It made sense. With that material and that man and that person, I was like, oh, I got it. So, yeah, the one word direction is, is good. Yeah. Yeah. But if someone wants to talk to me, like, I'll, I'll talk to them for a while. Yeah. That half built house on Sunrise Beach? Mm hmm. What about it? Well, I used the money from the Chicago house and I bought it. Now, I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure. You can inflate construction costs and you can launder money through it. And quite frankly, I don't give a shit if you like it or not. Because I feel pretty good about it. Of all the things that you've done, and there are so many, <laughs> what is the role that you're most proud of? That's really hard. Um, I'm proud of different ones for different reasons. Yeah. You know, and I have such love for the experience and for the people who I've been able to work with. I mean, I loved working with you on Squid and the Whale. I loved it. Me too. It was like coming home. There was like, oh, hi. <laughs> I don't have to From worry. The same school. I, yeah. I don't have to worry. And let's yeah. figure, let's see what this is. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, it's more the experience of making it. Yeah. Versus sure. the role or all Do you that. watch yourself? No. Yeah, I don't either. I can't. It's over. Yeah. It's over. It's the theater thing. The yeah. perform when the curtain comes yeah. down, yeah. when they say cut, and and it, um, Sigourney Weaver told me this. That's the first time I'd heard it. I think it's been around. The movie that you have in the, your head is not the one you're going to yeah. see. No, yeah. And that takes a long time to learn. And once you give in to that, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. realize the actor's role here in this particular movie or television, which shows which is to hand over some options and then yeah. go. There is a real sense of surrender. You got to surrender. Also, it was Squid and the Whale. We were at the New York Film Festival. Yes. Where this really hit me. Yes. And they at the New York Film, they haul yeah. us out and they put yeah. us in a royal box. Yeah, and they see the spotlight. Wave, yeah, yeah. Wave yeah. to two thousand people in front of a yeah. screening uh, screen that are yeah. about to see Squid and the Whale. Yeah. We did the thing. We sat down. Squid started, and I watched two thousand people watch it and I go, yeah. it's theirs. Yeah. It is no longer ours, yeah. it is now yeah. theirs. Yeah. And yeah. done.